three-time Dove Award winners that bring some flavor to any dance floor. A little Latin meets club music. They say they get how the art of storytelling impacts all cultures. Group One Crew, today on The Revolution. Welcome to The Revolution, a show with killer music and razor sharp truth. I'm George. And I'm Kat. Their music has been on One Tree Hill and in a promo for Chloe and Courtney Take Miami. And that's right, their beats are infectious, but even better than that is the driving goal behind their music, not to alienate anybody. Group one crew in a minute, but first, watch this. <laughs> During their writing process, Group One Crew prayed and asked the Lord, how did he impact so many people, believers and non-believers, encouraging Christians and impacting and asking others to listen? He was a storyteller. He spoke in parables. That's right, and Keys to the Kingdom is one of our favorite songs. It's just one of those songs that really encourages believers to step up and realize who they are. They're sons and daughters of the Most High. Here's Group One Crew. I'm a balloon animal man. It, balloon animals is what I did when I got out of Bible college. It's my own little business. But it got me out of debt, so I cannot complain. Make any animal under 30 seconds. You heard me. Three zero. I'm just saying, that's a whole lot of, that's a whole lot of goodness for someone who's looking for a husband. That's cool. This is what it looks like. Like this. I have this cool skill that I can pick things up with my toes. Yes. That's what I was gonna say. <laughs> Is that what you're thinking? <laughs> yeah, they're they're like monkey feet kinda. No, they're monkey hands. That's what they are. <laughs> Nobody knows that Pablo is a in and out closet vegetarian. <laughs> <laughs> this is because this is mine, this is mine. One time he comes back and um and um he he goes um Hey guys, I'm not eating any more meat anymore. You know, for my girlfriend, you know, she's a vegetarian. I'm not eating any more meat, right? And I said, Pablo, why are you not eating any more meat? He's like, because meat's bad for you. Because meat's bad for you. And I'm like, really? I'm like, um, not even fish? He's like, no, fish is, that's bad too. And I'm like, bro, do you know Jesus handed out fish and he ate fish? You know, like, is, did you know that? He's like, can I, well. Can I get in there? I think, I think. His exact words were, I will find it in the Bible <laughs> where you should not eat meat. He told me. <laughs> so I'm like, I, I still this is intense. I'm tried. like, Whoa. intense. And then, but then the best part about it was the very next day we were at Lone Star. No, Golden Corral. Golden was it Golden Corral? Golden I think Corral. And this fool, this fool goes, yeah, can I have a steak? Nobody knows. I'll be nice. That Manuel is a crybaby. Oh. <laughs> you know, he talks about how strong he is and how he mans up and it's all baloney. No, it's my turn now. <laughs> no, I'm scared. Nobody knows. <laughs> Don't do this. That Blanca wears weave. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, don't forget to visit us online, therevolutiontv.com. There you're going to find full episodes of The Revolution. You can find a link to our Facebook. Reach out to us. Remember, you're not alone, therevolutiontv.com. Well, we just want to challenge you guys to look into the Bible at the truths, at the truths that are in the Word of God. The Word of God is how we should be living our lives every day. Jesus Christ, who is God's Son, who came down here as a human wrapped in flesh, experienced every temptation, but He led a perfect life. He is our role model for walking out and living out this life with authority and with victory. This world is overshadowed by counterfeit beauty, 
And Satan wants nothing more than to confuse you and to sow doubt into who you think you really are. He would never want you to realize that you have the authority and God's power living on the inside of you once you ask Jesus to be the Lord of your life. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to give you a hope and a future. He wants to debunk all those myths and all the counterfeit beauty and the lies from this world and give you peace and a hope. He wants to restore the broken and give them the keys to the kingdom. We started six years ago and I think we have a pretty unique story. We started as a Bible study in Orlando. It was, I had just gotten saved at the time, I was 17, and um, my best friend brought me to them. They would meet up every Sunday and it was just for musicians, singers, rappers, anyone who wanted to just come together and like help each other stay accountable and focused on the call at hand. And so we would all meet, it was 13 people. And I mean, you put musicians together and you're just gonna make music. So we started little by little working on music on Manuel's first album. He was the first to do a solo thing and we all were features on it and stuff like that. And we kept building up until God called just us three together. And from there, we kept the name to represent the family we have back home. I, on the other hand, grew up in a broken home. And uh, my father left when I was about six years old. He was <clears throat> a big drug dealer, crack addict, and you know, used to cheat on my mom and the whole, just a horrible uh, marriage. So that's what I had growing up. So once he left, uh, my mom uh, took care of me and my brother growing up, and she was just that strong woman who kind of did everything the father and the mother would do. And um, so I think that was a, a big deal for me because I never really understood it. So I got older, my mom got a, a new boyfriend and he was a very abusive, uh, I guess, stepfather, you would say. And so I dealt with that mm -hmm. growing up and just never really understanding uh, what it was to truly be loved, I guess, by a man because I had you know, my father leaving, then abusive uh, stepfather, then, you know, getting into these relationships where I didn't value myself because I really didn't know what that meant. And um, the crazy thing about it, and I think it was just God and the way he works. My dad was the first saved in my family, crazy thing, and came back to uh, me and my brother to apologize for everything he had done while we were growing up. And so seeing him just change, I was like, that is not the dad that I know. So there ha whatever he's talking about or whatever's happened to him has to be real, you know? So he brought me and my brother to church and I actually got saved through my dad when I was 17. So it was a crazy turnaround. I just think God works that way because he knows what you need and what you've been through. So he, he works it out to where you can trust him because he'll take that one thing that you thought you would never trust and use that to bring you to him. So from then on, I met these wonderful people who have just kept me accountable and kept me strong. And I'm very thankful to be a part of Group One. What's up everyone? This is Group One Crew. And you're watching The Revolution. I was the kid who, um, I was the bad kid that you didn't really want your kids hanging out with, you know? I started at a very young age my uh, life of um, not so dignified living. I, I, I've been kicked out of like three schools, really? including preschool, it was either preschool or, I think it was preschool. Oh. I got kicked out, I cursed the teacher out, I got kicked out of middle school for fighting my principal almost expelled from, I was spent for like 14 days from high school for attempted assault. Um, so I was that guy, you know, trying to do the whole thug thing and um, stealing and robbing and all that stuff. I got into all that. I was a smart crook. I, I, I stole enough to build up some type of a reputation and then I just paid people to steal for me. Until one day, uh, my friends started getting 
locked up and stuff. I had a homeboy that got locked up and another homeboy that got shot. And, and I quickly realized that I'm not, as much as I try to be that hard guy, that, 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 that gangster persona, like it just wasn't, it wasn't who I was. That was my senior year of high school is when I stopped and got saved. Went to church camp and um, it was, the rest was, was, was history from there. Me and Pablo have been fortunate to do some prison ministry and I've done prison ministry on my own as well. And um, I don't know anybody in prison that's like, yeah, it was worth it. You know what I'm saying? I don't know anybody that would say, yeah, man, I'd, I'd love to do it again. You know, when they lost their life, you know, locked up for it. So to me, I would just encourage and implore them to really take a step back and, and to really analyze yourself the same way I had to analyze myself and realize that there comes a point in your criminal life where you have to decide whether this is you or not. Because I don't think anyone's born into a criminal mindset. I think it's developed by societal norms, or their, their peers and where they're engulfed in sociologically, you know what I'm saying? And I think there comes a point where you have to decide, okay, I'm gonna fully be this character. Cause that's what it is. We weren't born gangsters, you know, we're, we're taught that by our neighborhoods. Yeah, it's, 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 it's a persona that is appealing to a lot of people when that's, when that's your version of a role model. In your hood, that's what it is. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can't see beyond your hood because there's just no opportunity for you to see beyond your hood. Finding a faith walk is, is, is not, it's not something difficult to, to do when you step aside from yourself. And I think it came, for us, it came to a point where we just stopped thinking about us and our, our own idea of what we're here to do. And in each person's life, man, there, there was like a wall that you hit where you decided, or we decided where, um, whether or not we were gonna believe in this God that has chosen to show himself to us. I feel what it took was that extremity, that, that feeling of, dang, life is real, and you can, you can either die or live in this, in this understanding that there's a God that, that loves you, that made you to be more than what you currently are living out your life to be. And if you accept it, the key is accepting it and just believing that he has this for you, then the world is your oyster. Anything can happen and it's all based on the fact that you accept his grace. You got the keys inside this kingdom. Lift up your head, it's only begun. Keep holding on and you'll see the sun. Everybody singing now. You got the keys inside this kingdom. Lift up your head, it's only begun. Keep holding on and you'll see the sun. Everybody sing it now. Our favorite Group One Crew song is Keys to the Kingdom, and it talks about the authority that we have as Christians. When Christ is living on the inside of us, God is living on the inside of us. The Bible says that we have the authority we have been given the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and every vile thing that affronts the goodness and the glory of God. So he has that authority and he gave it to us. That is huge if we can really get that revelation. We have the keys to the kingdom. That's right. And you know, speaking about keys, in Revelation it talks about that Jesus has the keys to life and death in his mouth. The keys yeah. literally to, to life and death. And right. he's given us that key. You know, we don't have to live in death anymore. Yeah. He was hung on that cross. He took on all our sin uh -huh. and all the sin of everybody that's ever lived. And all we have to do is embrace him and believe him. And he conquered death that we wouldn't have to experience death. Yeah, we might have natural death in this earth, but we will be resurrected just like he was and have eternal life with him in heaven. Mm -hmm. But it all starts with having a real relationship with Jesus. And if you don't know Jesus, we challenge you to go find out what a real relationship with him is all about. We're not talking about religion. We're not mm -hmm. talking about what church you go to. We're not talking about reaching out to God. We're talking about embracing a God that's reaching out to you. And it just starts by getting to know him and making him the Lord of your life and turning from your sin, repenting, going 180 degrees away from anything that's unrighteous, anything that's away from God, and just coming close to Him. 
Now you can reach out to us at therevolutiontv.com. If you have any questions, we're there. We'll reach right back out to you, therevolutiontv.com. And on Facebook, The Revolution TV. We love you guys. And if God be for you, who can be against you?